Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome back. Uh, date today is uh, August 16th, Year of Our Savior, 2020. And the title of this video is called Phallus Worship Part 2. Yes, Phallus Worship Part 2. All right. So picking this up, we're learning about how ISIS, um, that her cult subsequently spread throughout the Roman Empire, and ISIS was worshipped from England to Afghanistan. But we see Osiris' wife, Isis, restores her husband's body, allowing him to posthumously conceive their son, Horus. So this is significant, folks. What we see here is Isis is known as somebody who actually has more power than Osiris. All right, She had power to reconstruct... Um, Osiris's generative principle and to get herself impregnated by that because Osiris was the god of fertility and then nine months later you have Horus the sun and he's supposed to be uh, Tammuz folks and that's where you get IHS Isis Horus and Set that the Society of Jesus uses today all right so that's what we're seeing. Uh, but her chief aspect was that of a great uh, magician uh, whose power transcended, transcended that of all other deities. Several narratives tell of her magical prowess, far stronger than the powers of Osiris and Re. She was frequently invoked on behalf of the sick and with the goddess uh, Nephthys, she protected the dead. All right, so very powerful, very powerful indeed. So continuing here, folks, about this aspect of from Babylon, this worship of the mother and the child spread to the ends of the earth. Now she's actually viewed as more powerful than Nimrod or Osiris. The Babylonians worship the woman uh, god Rhea and her son Tammuz, who was ascribed to as having great power powers. In Egypt, the mother and the child were worshipped under the names of Isis, Semiramis, and Osiris, Tammuz. In India, even to this day, they are called Isi, or Semiramis, and Iswara, Tammuz. In Greece, Semiramis was named Ceres. The great mother with the babe at her breast named Bacchus, or Tammuz. She was also called Irene, the goddess of peace, with the boy Plutus and her arms. The Greeks called the son Bacchus, for he was the god of revelry and drunkenness. His birthday was supposed to be at the winter solstice mid-December and was marked with parties and sexual orgies in the honor of the birth of Tammuz from the mother god. Bacchus means lamented one and comes from Bacha to weep or lament. Among the physicians says uh, Hesychius, Bacchus means weeping. As the women wept for Tammuz, so did they for Bacchus. In pagan Rome, Semiramis was known as Fortuna and Tammuz as Jupiter. Even in Tibet, China and Japan, the Jesuit missionaries were astonished to find the counterpart or duplicate of Madonna and her child worshipped as devoutly as in Papal Rome itself. She was Xing Mu, the Holy Mother in China, being represented with a child in her arms and a glory around her, exactly as if a Roman Catholic artist had been employed to set her up. All right, so going to... Egypt now, we have Egypt is about the obelisk. You want to look up obelisk, Stephen? Sure. And we can define what an obelisk is. An obelisk, of course, is going to be in Egypt because that's right where it was. Now, it is stated that Semiramis uh, erected a 130-foot high obelisk in Babylon. Diodorus Siculus states that. Okay. An upright four-sided, usually monolithic pillar that gradually tapers as it rises and terminates in a pyramid. 
okay. according to uh, Webster's Dictionary. Okay, yeah, and uh, it's you said monolithic, so that would be usually one piece of stone. Right. So it took a lot um, to um, make this, uh, and it says right here in Wikipedia, a tall, four-sided, narrow, tapering monument which ends in a pyramid-like shape or, or a pyramidium uh, at the top, and uh, this was... Uh, by the ancient uh, builders, the ancient Egyptians, the Greeks who saw them used the Greek term obeliskos to describe them, and this word passed into Latin and ultimately English. Excuse me. Uh, ancient uh, obelisks are, are monolithic, that is, they consist of a single stone. Most uh, modern obelisks are made of several stones. Right. So that's what we see. Obelisks played a major role in their religion and were prominent in the architecture of the ancient religions. It played a major role in their religion. Right, so we have this ancient Egyptian religion. It's nothing more than the mystery Babylonian religion mentioned in Revelation 17, verse 5. All right, so among the, uh, the ancient heathen nations, not only... Uh, were statues of the gods and goddesses in human form made, but many objects were venerated that had a symbolical, a hidden, a mystery meaning. An outstanding example of this can be seen in the worship of the ancient obelisks, one of which is seen in the accompanying illustration. All right, so we see Diodorus Siculus, about uh, one first century BC, I believe, says that Queen Semiramis erected an obelisk at Babylon, which was 130 feet in height. And so we know that the obelisks were used in the religion of Babylon, but it was especially in Egypt that their use became the most prominent. As is well known, Egypt became a great stronghold for paganism and the mystery system from the earliest times. There are a number of these ancient obelisks that are still in Egypt, though a number of them have been removed to other nations. One is in Central Park in New York, folks, uh, another in London, and many of them, as we shall see, were transported to Rome. I believe at least 12 were transpo uh, transported to Rome. Uh, originally, these obelisks were associated with sun worship. So that's what we see here, folks, is that the obelisk is representing the earthly representation of the sun, and the sun is masculine found in the scriptures, right? Isaiah 13, verse 10, talks about uh, the sun being masculine and the moon being feminine. Isaiah 13, 10? Yes, sir. Okay. You got it? Not yet. Okay. Whoever gets there first. Isaiah 13, verse 10. For now, the stars of heaven and constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Amen. Amen. So we have now Baal's shaft, or Nimrod's shaft, or Nimrod's obelisk. This is, this is the obelisk is representing Osiris's phallus, folks. That's what it is. And it's found throughout the world. So we see here that the the specifically in Heliopolis. Now he, Heliopolis is the the priest of Isis. Um, they were followers of the sun god Ra, and developed the myth of Isis. So we see right here in Heliopolis. Egypt, we have the center for sun worship. These are the priests of Baal, Baal priests. And we know that Heliopolis is, is uh, the first word of that. Polis, we know, right? Metropolis, metropolis. Polis is referring to city. And uh, Helio is referring to the sun city. That's exactly what that means. It's referring to sun city, sun worship. And when you're worshiping the sun, you also have the obelisk, which is the phallus of Nimrod or, or Osiris. 
Now we see that in the English language, you can verify this in your college dictionary, uh, Healy, H-E-L-I, or Helio, combination form from Latin from Greek, Healy, or Helio, from Helios, more at solar, it means sun. So this literally is a sun city. And then Helios, um, from the Greek Helios, it's pretty much translated directly, the god of the sun in Greek mythology. And that says compare with Sol, S-O-L, uppercase S-O-L, folks. So you look that up in the English language, and that is, I believe, either Middle English or Medieval English uh, from the Latin, and that's number one, the Roman god of the sun, and it says compare Helios, it means sun. So, you know, the Greek and the Roman, when the Rome conquered Greece, they just took all their gods, to, they, and all they did is change the names. That's all they did. So, then that's where we get heliocentric, folks. Heliocentric is what we believe today. We believe that the earth is rotating around the sun god, Helios, and that's where you get heliocentric. Uh, sun, where the, the sun is the center. And uh, number one of heliocentric is referred to or measured from the sun's center or appearing as if seen from it, having or relating to the sun as the center. And it says compare geocentric. So we have God's, God's model found in the Bible is heaven and earth, right, Steve? We've talked about that yep. many a times. There's yep. only heaven and earth where we live, but Satan has a counterfeit, and that counterfeit is Helios, uh, which is sun, Helios or soul, uh, heliocentric center of the sun or soul and uh, the Roman sun god and that's where you would get the word solar system. Now we're in a solar system spiraling through infinite and outer space at speeds that we can't even comprehend folks. Okay, this all equals sun worship and that is our model that we use today. We're following in the footsteps of Nimrod. We have Baal worship, and where do we learn Baal worship? From the schools, folks, because this mystery system was passed from nation to nation. All right? Now, Rome. Now, when Rome became a world empire, it is a known fact that she assimilated into her system of worship the gods and religions from various pagan countries over which she ruled. And since Babylon was the source or mother, the originator of false religion and idolatry of paganism in these countries, pagan Rome was but the Babylonian worship that had developed into various forms under different names in the countries to which it had gone. Rome ruled the world during the time Jesus Christ was born, lived among men, uh, died, and rose again. Now, Horus, it wasn't Horus that rose, Osiris that rose again, it was Jesus Christ that rose right, again. Right. He then ascended into heaven, sent back the Holy Spirit, and the church was confirmed. Multitudes were added to the church and it encircled the mountains and crossed the seas. It made kings to tremble and tyrants to fear. Christianity swept the world like a prairie fire. It was said of the early Christians that they turned the world upside down. All right. However, shortly thereafter, men began to substitute their ideas and their methods. Attempts to merge paganism into Christianity were being made even in the days of the New Testament, where, uh, when the New Testament was being written. For Paul mentioned that mystery of iniquity. How about uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, Stephen? 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy 
4.1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Amen. Amen. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what is he saying? He's saying this is Satan worship. Mm -hmm. Should we be partaking in Satan worship? Because we're in this, we're in this matrix, folks. You've heard that movie, but matrix means womb, womb of Isis. I mean, mother goddess worship that's all over the world. Well, we're still in it. And God says to come out of Babylon, mystery Babylon. Uh, what about um, Jude 3 and 4? Jude 3 and 4. Jude. 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful me for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you would earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men who crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I think that the, the phallic obelisk symbol is, is pretty much uh, a, uh, a mark of the lasciviousness that uh, God was condemning. Um, so we see that Christianity came face to face with Babylonian paganism in its various forms that had been established in the Roman Empire. The early Christians refused to have anything to do with its customs and beliefs. Maybe we should do that today, folks. Yeah. Did you know that December 25th is Sol Invictus, S-O-L, which is the Roman sun god or the Greek sun god. And, uh, you know, that's Nimrod, Nimrod's birthday. Uh, so that's Baal worship. That's Baal's shaft. Baal's shaft, Nimrod's shaft, Nimrod's phallus, Osiris's phallus, is found worldwide. And we're going to get into that, folks. It's going to be a little bit graphic, but that's, you know, we're going to probably pick that up in the next session. Uh, Stephen's been doing some research on that, and he's like, you got to be kidding me. And I go, I know. Uh, I mean, there's parades and all sorts of stuff, folks. So, uh, but that's all worshiping the sun because that's the brightest, all right? So much persecution. Many Christians were falsely accused, thrown to lions, burned at the stake, and in other ways, tortured and martyred, but then great changes began to be made. The emperor of Rome professed conversion, right? And now what we hear today, yeah. oh, I'm a Protestant. Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, we're just separated brother. No, we're not separated brother and folks. You serve the Antichrist. We shouldn't be serving the Antichrist. The emperor of Rome professed conversion. Uh, imperial orders went forth throughout the empire that persecution should, should cease. Bishops were, be get, were given high honors, laudation, right? The church began to receive worldly recognition and power, but for all of this, a great price had to be paid. Many compromises were made with paganism. Instead of the church being separate from the world, mm -hmm. it became a part of this world system. The emperor showing favor demanded a place of leadership and the church. For in paganism, emperors were believed to be gods. Mm -hmm. From here on, wholesale mixtures of paganism and Christianity were made, as all histori historians know. As shocking as it may sound, the very paganism that originated in Babylon and went through Egypt and spread to the nations was now thoroughly mixed with Christianity, especially at Rome. This mixture uh, produced what is known today as the Roman Catholic Church. Yep. The seat of Satan, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. All right. So just getting back, folks, we want to just hit this home because we're going to be talking about obelisks. And they started pretty much in Egypt. Egypt was a part of the Fertile Crescent, was a part of the land of Shinar, was connected to Babylon, folks, and those pyramids. All right, all of this stuff is representing, the pyramid facing up is representing 
the male phallus is what it's representing. So we see that uh, Isis, uh, or Semiramis, uh, using her magical power, she's the queen of heaven, folks. She's the queen of heaven mentioned in the Bible. Uh, Steve, why don't you turn to uh, Jeremiah 7 while I'm reading this, if you don't mind. Uh, Jeremiah 7, verse uh, 18. And uh, uh, we see here uh, that um, Isis was a great, uh, neither living nor dead, Osiris had become a mummy. All right, she was able to make Osiris whole, bandaged, neither living nor dead, Osiris had become a mummy. You have mummies in Egypt, right, Stephen? Yep. Uh, nine months later, Isis bore him a son, Osiris a son, and called his name Horus. That's where you get the mother uh, child worship. Isis was a great magician whose power transcended that of all deities. Her magical prowess was far stronger than the powers of Osiris and Ra. Isis became known in the Egyptian pantheon as the Eye of Ra and was equated with the dog star Sirius. Good, my brother. Uh, Jeremiah 7, 18, the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. God doesn't like this. No. How about Jeremiah 44, uh, 17 through 19? <laughs> Provoking God to anger. He doesn't like this. And this, when we deviate from God's word, endangers children. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals, and, when, and were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, we did make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men. Without our men. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the feminist movement today, folks. Yeah. Um, so important temples were built in Isis or Semiramis's honor, uh, including the island temple of Philae, uh, were built during the uh, Greco-Roman or the Greek Roman times when Isis was dominant among Egyptian goddesses. Several temples were dedicated to her in Alexandria, Egypt. From Alexandria, Egypt, her cult spread to Greece and eventually to Rome. Images of Isis nursing the baby Horus have influenced the early Roman Christian, Roman Catholic, I mean, I'm called Roman Catholics, artists who depicted the Virgin Mary with the baby Jesus. Exactly as uh, Semiramis and Tammuz in Babylon, or Isis and Horus in Egypt, and of course all the other names that we've seen. Isis, uh, um, so this is what we're seeing, folks. We're seeing this, uh, this Baal, why Baal's shaft, uh, we're seeing Baal's shaft erected all over the world, folks. And it was a big deal of why these, um, uh, these uh, pagan Roman uh, Caesars or emperors were bringing these obelisks from, from uh, Egypt. Specifically, I believe it's the Vatican obelisk set up in the center of St. Peter's Basilica that has formed, uh, that is like a 4,000-year-old obelisk that comes from Helio Heliopolis. Mm -hmm. Now, Heliopolis is in Egypt, and it is, uh, remember we talked about Metropolis, right? Metropolis, the first city was from Cain who was of that wicked one, Satan worship, and then after that post-flood, but it was metro, metro meaning mother city, mother city. Well, this is just more mother goddess worship with the mother goddess religion. Well, now you have 
Heliopolis. Polis meaning city and Helios meaning sun. So it's a sun worship system and that's why you have all these obelisks or representations of the penis all over in Egypt and that's why Rome because the seed of Satan was passed from Babylon to Egypt throughout the, through Medio Persia to Pergamos Pergamos found in the Bible which is the Greek Greco Empire Alexandria the Great and then eventually was transferred to Rome that's the seed of Satan folks and that has influenced the world big time all right so continuing here I'm gonna take off my glass a little fine print but um, we see that these um, these obelisks were associated with sun worship. They were symbols of Nimrod or Baal in deified form. Baal worship involves obelisks, folks. Baal worship, and we have the largest symbolic Baal shaft mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., which is the goddess of the district of the goddess of Columbia. Uh, might as well call it the uh, um, district of the goddess of Isis or Semiramis, right? Uh, so that's what we're seeing. These ancient people rejected the knowledge of the true creator, seeing that the sun gave life to plants and the men looked upon the sun, S-U-N, as God, the great life giver. But not only were the obelisk sun symbols, they were recognized as sex, sex symbols also. Well, that's why you had consecrated. Consecrated means it's proved by the priesthood. It is a religion of prostitution. It's a religion of sex, folks. And we wonder why we have these children missing today that are used in sexual ceremonies where they're defiled, tortured, and eventually sacrificed or killed in the name of Moloch, right? Moloch or Baal worship sacrificing children to Satan. You think we should be aware of this? Yes, you, yes we should. God bless you. Bye.